God is good and all the time. Amen. We welcome everyone who's coming out of town, who's coming from Tri-Cities area today to be a part of this service. Today is a special service. We're believing for deliverance. We're believing for God to break the chains with the devil that's bound people in Jesus name. Amen. We're believing the fire of the Holy Ghost. Any moment from now is going to fall on people today in this room and we will see Satan defeated, Jesus exalted, sickness being put to shame. Amen. And healing manifest in Jesus mighty name. Come on somebody. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ. Amen. We must understand that devil is real. Kingdom of darkness is real. Curses are real. They hurt people. They torment people. And people suffer today because of that. We must understand that Jesus came on this earth to defeat the devil. Disarm the devil. And gave us the authority to do the same to the devil that what he did on this earth. Can somebody say amen? In the beginning we understand that devil's job was to deceive men with his voice. Paul says that there's five animal descriptions of our enemy. One of them is a bird. Satan as a bird he seeks to steal the Word of God. As a wolf he seeks to steal the sheep. As a lion, like a lion he seeks to devour us. As a dragon he seeks to deceive us. But the first mention of Satan in the Bible and the one that we will all come in conflict with and in contact with all the time and that's going to be a snake or a serpent. And as a serpent he seeks to affect and infect us with his voice. We know that Satan in the garden of Eden did not come at Adam and Eve, the first parents, with the sword and with the knife and with the gun, with the bazooka, with the tank, he came with his voice and with his voice he brought doubt, he brought deception, he brought lies and because humanity believed his voice they also fell prey to his vice. In order to defeat the weapons of the devil we have to first defeat the voice of the devil. The Bible says no weapon formed against you can prosper because it says later on because every voice that rises against you you will condemn. If you want to disarm the weapon, you got to disable the voice. Because Satan, he activates his vice through his voice. When he speaks, he unleashes with his voice destruction, defeat and failure. When you hear doubt, you hear the devil. Because the first time Satan spoke to our parents, how did he speak? He didn't come and say, I am Lucifer, I'm here to kill you. He came and he put a question mark where God put an exclamation mark. God created them like in his image and Satan came and says if you want to be like God. God did God really say? Satan comes to Jesus and say if you are the son of God. When you hear doubt you hear the devil. When you hear fear you hear the devil. When you hear guilt and condemnation you hear the devil. When you hear failure when you hear lies you hear the devil and today I want us to be people who stand up against the devil's lies defeat those lies and see the voice of God become a reality in our lives somebody say amen come on somebody let's put our hands together for Jesus I remember hearing a testimony of Frank and a Frank had a rough lifestyle because of in the childhood he had an incident that happened where he was abused he was molested and after that he started to gamble in drugs and rebellion and lived a very 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 rough life. Eventually he went to jail because of drugs. When he was in jail he started to hear a voice and this voice would help him to avoid certain getting in trouble in jail. This voice in jail would tell him what, how to find drugs. In jail this voice would tell him how to avoid you know the officers there and to sneak things in jail and he actually fell in love he didn't know what this voice was but he was he, he felt like this voice is helping me there came a moment where this voice told him to draw a pentagram to draw this symbol which was a symbol uh, from a demonic or a occultic kind of a um, thing when he drew this symbol he says according to him that he felt a spirit enter frank in jail he says, I already had demons, but this one that entered me, he said, it was something different. I felt my body, my emotions and my mind shift after that. And from that point on, he was no longer 
getting guidance from the voice he was getting terrorized and he was getting tormented he gets released from jail he eventually goes to the navy he gets kicked out of uh, navy because uh, because of the things that he did and this voice that came in from the devil started to create a reality which wasn't real for example the reality this voice created in his mind now some people can diagnose as schizophrenia but this was more than just schizophrenia it was a spiritual problem where he felt like this world got invaded by aliens everybody got captured and they're after him and he needs to fight off anybody he didn't see people he saw aliens trying to capture him and infect him he took a hammer because he worked in construction would go on the street and anyone he see he saw them as an alien trying to capture him and infect him he put seven people in in hospital one person received a permanent brain damage and two people were murdered all under the guidance of the voice when in the, in the hospital they tied him up and they measured up that that his strength that he occupied was seven times more than an average human being and they said this is not normal this guy is not just schizophrenic there's something wrong with him he exhibits a supernatural unusual physical strength and it was demonic strength that was given to him to hurt other people and then the devil law tried to, to do his last thing on him what he told him that the only way you get not infected and captured by the aliens is if you slice your own wrist so he broke a glass right there in the hospital and went for ending his life God miraculously somebody stepped in and they stopped the bleeding before he bled to death they put him in jail and right there in jail a woman whose husband he killed on his rampage decides to meet with him and when she met with him she says I need to forgive you for murdering my husband and not only that but for God to turn this thing for good you have to get saved she gives him her husband's Bible and says promise me that you will read this book it's his book and you took his life you took him from me now you need to read the Bible and this demon possessed guy who hears voices decides to open the Bible and when he started to read the Bible he quickly realized he's been listening to the wrong voice and he for the first time heard the voice of God that was calling him to repent when he repented and gave his life to Christ right there in that jail facing a 30-year sentence God the Holy Spirit came and saved him he delivered him from the demonic oppression he delivered him from drugs and he delivered him from that schizophrenia he delivered him from hearing voices and he was completely set free he started to now hear the voice of the Holy Spirit his 30-year sentence was reduced to 12 years and the lady that was coming to serve them in jail he befriended her and actually got married with her Today this man Frank has a ministry that mainly serves to people who are heavy criminals. Murderers, pedophiles, people who are perpetrators, people that are, that we, we don't even want them to get saved kind of people. And he goes to those people and God uses him to save even those kind of people. I can tell you one thing, God is alive. Somebody say amen. God saves today. God changes people today. And God sets free today. But I want to tell you something that the devil is real. Our goal here is not to glorify the devil but our goal here today is to show that he is real. He has power but Jesus Christ has a greater power and Jesus Christ is alive today. He changes people's lives and he is going to change your life in Jesus name. Somebody say Amen. Amen. You have to understand is that we're talking about worship this month and worship and praise silences the devil see when you hear voices one of the ways to silence those bad voices of fear and doubt is when you begin to praise God the Bible says that God uses the praises of children to silence the avenger it means means you don't have to be a strong Christian for God to use your praise to shut the devil up see some of us need to learn how to shut up the devil and sometimes you can speak and, and say like Jesus said to demons he says be silent when the devil speaks to you you can literally stand up as a believer and say you know what devil shut up but sometimes you don't have to tell him to shut up you just open up your mouth and you begin to do something that freaks him out you begin to worship God you begin to praise God and then God goes in and says devil shut up 
I'm trying to listen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, the devil knows that. So what he would try to do, the devil has a demon on a payroll called the mute spirit whose number one goal is to make you mute. Meaning to take away your ability to speak. Because devil knows if you open your mouth, you can move your mountain through your mouth. He knows that you're going to start saying, let the weak say I am strong. You're gonna, you, you can speak yourself into your miracle. So he is afraid of that. He knows when you open your mouth and start praising God, stuff's going to start happening. He knows when you open your mouth and you start confessing your sin, you will get free of your sin. He knows if you open your mouth and you start confessing that by his stripes you were healed and stand on that you're going to have faith and that faith will activate something in God. And so he dispatches a demon on a payroll whom he pays loftily. He says go shut them up. Go let them not speak during worship. Let them not pray during prayer. Let them cuss and complain and whine but don't ever ever let them confess their sin or praise God or pray. But today we're going to put the demon out of work. <laughs> because nothing's gonna hold back our phrase nothing's gonna hold back our prayer nothing is gonna hold back our confession nothing is gonna hold back us praising God and if you are with me this morning I want you to give God a shout of praise hallelujah 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 our God is a good God and he's worthy to be praised and as we're coming to a time of prayer for deliverance um, along with our series on worship and prayer and praise I want to look at a story in the Bible that very is from very familiar to many of us when one mother had a daughter and this daughter was severely demon possessed that's what the mom said and she came to Jesus with that problem and I want you to notice in Matthew chapter 15 that Jesus did not rebuke the mother and says ah she's not demon possessed you're making this up Jesus didn't come to the mother and say, no, why blaming demons all the time? You know, you, she, she just needs to see the doctor. She just needs probably some counseling and some uh, psychiatrist, some medicine. Jesus didn't do that. Jesus actually believed her. Jesus being God knew that though this mother was not a Jewish mother, she was a Gentile mother, but her diagnosis of the situation was pretty accurate. And so this mother comes to Jesus and begins to ask for her daughter, says, Jesus, my daughter is demon possessed. Now she didn't bring her daughter with her. Most likely the case of demon possession here was so severe that the daughter was locked up or was chained up. She probably wasn't even able to bring her with, with herself. And so she comes to the Lord and says, Lord, please do something about my daughter. And we see that Jesus says nothing. In Matthew 15 verse 23, it says, but he answered her not a word. For those of you who are coming for, for deliverance today, for those of you who may be visiting us for the first time, I want to tell you something that God wants you to learn how to overcome His silence. God's silence is not God's absence. God's, God is not silent because He doesn't like you. God is not silent because He doesn't want to answer you. God is not silent because He wants to punish you. God is silent because actually He's developing your faith. Many people build their theory, theory and theology on God based on His silence. They prayed once, they prayed twice, nothing happened. Well, it must be God's will not to heal, not to deliver, not to save. Imagine if this woman would have left this meeting and says, you know what, Jesus didn't answer anything. I guess it is His will for my daughter to suffer like that. Don't take God's silence and walk away with it. Stick with it until God speaks. Somebody say amen. See, when I was in school, if you were a teacher, and in the school when you put your students through a test you're usually silent during the test the teacher talks a lot during the class until the test comes and when the test comes the teacher goes Rrr. and this is when you want the teacher to speak right you're like hook me up with some answers when God is silent it's because he's testing you he's testing your faith he's not punishing you he's not against you God is not silent because what you're asking is wrong. God is, God is silent because He wants your faith to surface instead of your frustrations. He wants to surface your faith. He wants you to begin to lean more not on what you feel, not on what you see, not on His silence, but on the scripture and His holy word. Can somebody say amen? 
but I'll give you one more tip is that when this woman saw that Jesus was silent the Bible says in in the same verse and the disciples came and urged him point number two if you can't get to Jesus get to his followers if you can't get if Jesus doesn't seem to answer you get everyone in your home group to bug him for you get everyone on your prayer group say guys he's not listening to me <laughs> can we all um give him a call and then Jesus replied to the disciples so Jesus' silence was broken not because the woman asked him but because disciples asked him sometimes you gotta get a mentor a parent a friend a pastor an apostle an evangelist or or somebody else who's maybe closer to Jesus than you are at that moment and say listen could you talk to him on my behalf as well we're not saying that what that your prayer doesn't matter what we're saying is Jesus says where two or three are gathered in my name I am there among them come on somebody I believe it's important not to sin secretly and suffer silently many people what kills them is not their sin it's the fact the secrecy of their sin when you open up to somebody something happens with that sin because sin dies in the dark it dies in the light it grows in the dark when you hide it when nobody knows about it it actually begins to hurt you more when you suffer and you suffer alone and you feel like God is silent but when you open up of what you're going through and I'm not saying on Facebook that is not opening up that is unwise and I'm not talking about doing an Instagram video where you go in and you you roll all of your dirty laundry into the internet nobody's gonna care about that and most people are gonna be happy that you got it because not a lot of people are for you but I'm talking about finding people who actually know Jesus who know you and who will hear that cry who will hear that hurt who will hear that sin and not judge you for it and say hey you know what let's talk to Jesus about it let's pray together when you're gonna fast I'll fast with you have someone that you don't sin secretly or suffer silently open up somebody say amen come on hallelujah and when she does that disciples finally get the attention of Jesus the only problem is that the answer Jesus gave them was not the answer the woman wanted Jesus didn't say well great disciples since you got me in the corner now the woman got you guys let's go ahead and deliver her daughter Jesus replies to the woman and to the disciples and she said he says I can't so not only she had the silence of Jesus now she has the rejection of Jesus what do you do when your problem goes from bad to worse with Jesus you see it's one thing if you've been with the devil but you finally decided to follow God and things only getting worse we don't like to talk about it in church but let's be real not all the time your life gets better I know that's how that testimony sound on the stage but let's talk about the life down the stage Many, many of us, before God gave the breakthrough, things went from good, they looked good, but in reality they were not really good. They went to bad. And then we really pressed into God and things went from bad to really, 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 really bad. What do you do then? There's two ways to do it. One way is to say, well, if things are only getting worse with Jesus, I don't want him to go really bad. So I'm just going to leave Jesus before things go really, really bad because it seems like being with Jesus is making only things worse that's one way there was a man who came to Jesus his daughter was sick started to walk with Jesus so that she gets healed and as they walk with Jesus the daughter gets worse she dies and the messenger came and they said leave Jesus alone do you see that walking with Jesus only bad makes bad things worse and Jesus grabs that man and said listen don't be afraid only believe Jesus doesn't make bad things go worse without worse things becoming a miracle. See, when you stick with Jesus, when things go worse, you'll be surprised if God has a miracle in your situation and in your life. 
but the devil will come right before your miracle he says look God only made things worse first of all it wasn't God who made things worse you made things worse the devil made things worse and just because you lived with the devil for 20 years and you sneaked in with God for two minutes and things are getting worse you can't blame God but the devil wants you to leave God so that you don't experience the miracle God has for your life come on somebody and so this woman she has things are going from bad the silence of Jesus to really bad the rejection of Jesus but I want you to see what she does if we look at Matthew 15 25 it says then so after the rejection she came and worshiped him when things go from bad to worse turn your worse into worship what does she do she realized Jesus is ignoring her and then when he's not ignoring her he's rejecting me she's like you know what I'm gonna do something that is very unusual she got right in front of him not behind him but right in front of him and the Bible says she probably kneeled down and she worshiped him and let me tell you something it's very difficult to step over a worshiper because Jesus is walking you can't step over her she's not asking now she just says Lord help me when your things go from bad to worse don't go from worse to a club don't go from worse to drugs don't go from worse to loading a gun and going going killing everybody go don't go from worse to depression don't go from worse to overeating don't go worse to going on a shopping spree to make yourself better go from worse to worship you will catch the attention of God the Bible says that when he saw that he started to speak to her maybe you're saying but Vlad I can't do that when the situation gets worse I don't feel like worshiping well then worship is a sacrifice but you have to offer that sacrifice but you don't understand my situation is so difficult right now that I can't worship the only thing I feel like is crying the only thing I feel like doing is complaining and whining don't do what you feel like you've been doing this all your life do at least something one time where it's act of your faith not an act of your hurt emotions there was a man who had a, a legion of demons a legion is a lot of demons I don't know how they fit in that one man but they did and this there's, there's so many demons I want you to see what it says in Mark chapter 5 verse 6 all of these demons they, they hurt him so bad these demons occupied him so intensely that he lived on the graveyard no man could bound him with chain he exhibited supernatural strength he was naked he had no sense of awareness this man was mental he was lost having that many demons he was not in control of himself but I want you to see something that could set you free in here when Jesus came all of those demons who took his mind his clothing his freedom they couldn't keep him from two things when he saw Jesus from afar he ran and worshiped him don't tell me don't tell me that the doctor's report stole your worship don't tell me that whatever you've been going through now you can't come to church he ran to Jesus and worshiped him <laughs> devil might have taken this that and that but he has not been authorized to take your worship and you're running after Jesus and it's your worship and you're running after Jesus that will unlock the miracle unlock your freedom unlock your healing unlock your breakthrough unlock a change in your life somebody give God a praise in this house right now give God a worship in this house right now come on somebody yes Lord hallelujah 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 amen the Bible says that he ran and worshiped when your problem goes from bad to worse turn your worse into worship and honestly what happens then is you're throwing the whole problem under the feet of Jesus and now your problem because Jesus' problem and then from what I heard Jesus is really good at fixing problems come on somebody are you with me when she's there in worship I want you to see I want us to go one step further when she's there in worship we see something that happens is that Jesus looks at her and says woman you know that I came to give bread to the children now he's referring to deliverance he says and you are not the child in fact I can't give bread to the dogs so Jesus in fact now calls her a dog 
now if this would have been if Jesus would have called her a dog in 21st century it's a compliment the way we treat dogs is way better than we treat people <laughs> all right I walked uh, went to the park for a walk one time and the neighbor's dog attacked me I never called police this the dog just went at me I fell scratched myself and the dog the dog attacked me I forgave him during this week I went with Jacko and the dog attacked Jacko I called police you can attack me all you want when you attack that little uh, four-legged animal who becomes a source of a little bit of joy in my life you're in trouble <laughs> because we live in a country where, where dogs mean a little bit differently than this so you have to read the bible not through the context of american culture in this culture the dogs didn't have much rights you didn't get sued if you ran over a dog in this culture dogs didn't have hospitals dogs didn't get vaccinated and dogs did not have a, a food that's like a hundred dollars per bag dogs didn't get haircuts this was a different generation that they lived in where dogs were not honored as they are honored today. So let me bring down to what had happened here. To be called a dog was for her, it was humiliating. It was humbling. It contradicted her reality. She didn't see herself as a dog. People didn't call her a dog. She definitely didn't think Jesus is going to call her a dog. So imagine being in the presence of Jesus where you went from silence to no to you finally like you know what I don't care about all of this I'm just gonna worship you you worship him and now Jesus does something where he calls you with something that literally messes you up you're like what like Jesus this is even worse than no and you know what the woman says she didn't say no you didn't no you, you really you don't know my rights as a woman you know what the woman says she said sounds good you call me a dog I'll get the crumbs let me tell you something about the truth before the truth will set you free it will make you uncomfortable now you will say you have to understand one thing if Jesus would have called you a dog today most of us or if Jesus would have called you ah you know but you're like yes Lord I know it doesn't take faith to believe you're a dog for you but it does take faith to believe when he calls you a son he called her a dog he calls you a daughter and many times you're in his presence and he calls you a champion and you're like no I don't look like I don't feel like I don't get called like the doctor's report doesn't prove that so my finances doesn't Jesus no and for us to receive what Jesus says about us is the same way as for this woman to receive that she was a dog you're like that contradicts my reality but see before the truth of Jesus sets you free it will mess you up and if you allow the truth to make you miserable temporarily it will set you free permanently somebody say amen God comes to Abraham and Abraham just got caught in the generational curse of lying. He lied, his son lied, his grandkids lied and great grandchildren lied so bad they end up Joseph in jail. Lying is his problem. He lies to Abimelech and God comes to Abimelech and says I want you to call my prophet. And Abimelech says you got a prophet on earth? Who is he? Oh Abraham. Abraham the liar is your prophet? Yes he is my prophet and he'll pray for you and I'll heal your women. Imagine Abraham gets a news from Abimelech, like, hey lying prophet, come into my house and pray for healing. Healing? I, well, how do you pray for healing? I pray for barren women. How can I pray for barren women when my own wife is barren? I've never seen a healing in my life. But see, but Abraham had to realign his situation, his feelings, his mistakes, which only happened a few days ago, to what God said about him. And God says, you are a prophet. <laughs> God comes to Moses and say, Moses, I want you to go to Pharaoh and I will deliver the nation of Israel. And Moses says, God, do you know I'm running from Pharaoh? Do you know that I don't want to be there? And God says, I don't care. You're called to be a deliverer. God, I can't speak. God says, didn't I 
be the one who gives the power to speak I make someone mute and I make somebody speak and Moses goes in and he realigns himself see the truth we love the results of the truth but the process of the truth is excruciatingly painful God comes to Gideon who's hiding from Midianites and says you're a mighty man of valor he says God who are you talking to <laughs> it's definitely not me I mean you just pulled me out of the cave where I'm hiding from Midianites I am no mighty I am no valor and you are not with me if you would be with me I wouldn't be hiding in this hole but you have to realign yourself in the presence of God to what God says about you you have to push your feelings aside you have to push what happened to you in the past aside you have to ignore what the mama said what the daddy says what your hater says what your ex says that you will never make it you'll never succeed you have to put that aside and says what God says matters the truth will set you free but it will make you uncomfortable first hallelujah you know I am currently not wearing wearing Invisaligns but I've been wearing Invisaligns for the last few months to make my teeth straight See, I have a teeth that they're slowly becoming crooked. Twisting the wisdom teeth and because I'm gaining wisdom, the wisdom teeth is appearing more and they're pushing on the rest of the teeth and, and because of that, I decided to, because of my public speaking and I'm constantly in the public, decided to make my teeth straight. Now the idea of straight teeth, they showed me a picture of how my teeth will look in 42 weeks. They look so good. So I hope that there is some kind of anointing water, oil, spray, I don't know, something that they put me under that I just come out with straight teeth. Did you know what they did? They gave me a box of these plastic little things that I put on every single Monday that make my teeth first day. It was so painful. I was so discouraged in myself. I wanted to throw all of that away and say, what the heck am I thinking? My teeth are straight. What is wrong with me and everything? Because it created so much discomfort. I have to take them off and put them on and it has to be for 42 weeks. My teeth will look so good in 42 weeks. But the process is irritating. Everybody loves the idea of a great marriage. It's the process that's painful where you have to realign each truth in your marriage to the truth of God's word. You have to realign your attitude as a woman. You have to realign your attitude as a man. You have to realign your time management skill, your money management skills. You have to realign each thing and we love the idea of a beautiful marriage. We love the idea of beautiful life but I want to tell you something. God doesn't just give you. He changes you by the knowing of the truth and that truth makes you uncomfortable. Somebody say amen. We've come to a time where I want you to see it lastly in this story is the woman Jesus says the bread belongs to the kids but the crumbs I guess belong she says and the crumbs could belong to the dogs I want you to make a observation that deliverance to a believer what bread is to a child deliverance to a believer what bread is to a child God thinks that's Jesus said that I didn't come up with that that deliverance which what this woman was asking for belongs to the children so why is that I keep hearing that Christians shouldn't be delivered if you think Christians do not need deliverance I think kids don't need food well why don't you run that as an experiment with your family and let us know how that goes we'll see where your kids will be in two weeks no kids need food it's their it's the right correct they don't earn the they they're, because they're in your house as a responsible parents you give them their food Jesus says deliverance is the right for the believers that means when you get in God's house it's your right to be free from depression it's your right to be free from demons it's your right to be free from nightmares it's your right to be free from disease it's your right to be free from generational curses come on somebody it's your bread it belongs to you it belongs to your children it belongs to your marriage it belongs to your health it belongs to your family somebody give God a shout of praise come on somebody hallelujah you may take your seats but I want you to see the important part here it's not only that the, that the bread belongs to you bread belongs to me but you probably have had this in your family where your parents prepared a really beautiful and good meal and you came you looked at and you're like I don't like it was it tacos again no I want something different what is this you know that the mashed potatoes again in the salad no is it just borscht and pelimeni I'm just tired of it 
one of the reasons why children don't eat bread is because they're not desperate and they're not hungry and this woman though not being a child she says Jesus there's a lot of your kids are spoiled brats a lot of them still debating whether they need deliverance or not he says while they do that over there upstairs give me a crumb I'll eat the crumb I'll eat something I get and that small crumb it will be enough to get my whole family free from demons thousands and legions of those demons you have to know that you don't have to get a loaf to be free if you just get a crumb if you just get a little bit today the rest of it is going to work itself out if you just get a little bit the rest of it will work itself out come on somebody sometimes people come even for prayer and I was like you know what but I still have this little pinky hurting and stuff listen if you got a crumb work with it and let the crumb turn into full freedom for the rest of your family and the rest of your generation come on somebody we're coming to a time of prayer I want to remind you for those of you who are coming here you're already desperate because to come on Memorial Weekend for prayer line is a sign of desperation it's a sign of hunger and I want to tell you something the Lord is going to meet you halfway today but deliverance is for the desperate let me speak for those who are watching us listening us on the podcast and and for those who are here if you want to be free stop being picky and stop being lazy and stop making excuses deliverance because it's yours God is not going to shove it down your throat you won't do that to your kids when your kid doesn't want to eat that that chicken or that potato you don't open their mouth and start shoving it in no you say you don't want it you don't want it and that's exactly how the Lord does the Holy Spirit has bread set up on the table right now but if you come to service and you simply say well I'm just not sure I'm just picky yeah I just wanted to be free but I you know like the name and said he said but I want him to come lay hand on me like this wave his hand at me uh, he's not coming out now nah, I'm not sure I want to be healed well great keep your leprosy God bless you and the servants came to him he said listen really he says he's asking you to go baptize yourself in the dirty river and you have a problem with that you're a leper you shouldn't be picky if he asked you to drink mud go drink mud come on if Jesus spit on the people what is what is this to you and Naaman humbled himself I want to tell you something in order to receive freedom you got to be humble and you got to be desperate when I was introduced to pornography and then I got addicted and the spirit evil spirit entered into my life and I noticed that it was an evil spirit I started reading about it and I heard and I found out that it was it's a demon it wasn't just an addiction to pornography it was an evil spirit I felt its presence but I prayed I fasted I prayed against it I confessed to our pastor I had other people pray for me but my freedom didn't really happen until this problem reached its peak in my own heart it happened at one event outside of this city when and it wasn't anything I did different there it wasn't like I looked at something gross or something bad it was just the feeling of that it was coming on me I was wrestling with it and and I beat it that day in the sense I didn't look at pornography but but the feeling of it always coming on me is just it was so disgusting I didn't want to get married and eventually hide it or confess it to my wife and I decided there and then in Spokane that I want to come back to Tri Cities I was 17 years of age and I'm going to fast until God delivers me and this wasn't one of those declarations that people make I knew it in my heart I'm going to die either God delivers me or I die but I'm not going to live with this problem for the rest of my life I came back home it was Monday Sunday night I started the fast and then all the way till next Sunday and that fast was so easy because when you're desperate you don't care and you don't care what people think about you you're not there to win popular popular opinion you're not there to impress anybody you're not there oh I don't want my video to show up on YouTube you don't care about nothing you're like either I get free or I don't want to live and honestly that week the Holy Spirit did something special in my heart he delivered me from that and God sees your desperation I remember a year ago I came to the I was on a Wednesday night youth service and and a young man pulled in and I know him from he goes from the Russian uh, other uh, Russian church and he comes in once in a while here he came in here and he looks so horrible he looks so bad I was like bro is everything okay with you he started telling me of all the addictions to do heroin and and the shooting needles into himself and all the stuff that he's been doing how he says I have a demon and he told me all the stuff he's been doing I was like bro you got probably more than one and he's a Vlad he says I do stuff he started mentioning sexual perversion things that he would do he says I'm disgusting myself but I can't stop it and as I was talking to him I told him I said listen bro you need to you need to see God and you need to go to rehab I'm like your case you need rehab and he's like I can't I have a job I was like you're a walking corpse you don't have a job 
and like the car you're driving is not yours your license has been suspended I was like cop is gonna pull you over on your way here to home you'll be in jail you won't have a job I was like you better quit your job and go to rehab tonight he's like would it be just like tonight I was like are you crazy I was like you're not only messed up I'm like you're not desperate and he stands like he's like well how much is it gonna cost I was like what do you mean how much is it gonna cost I was like I'm more desperate for you than you are for yourself I gave him two numbers and I said there's a rehab in California I'll pay for your ticket you fly there and there's a rehab locally here but I'm like local is more harder because you'll be tempted to go to your friends and I said you let me know tonight I buy the ticket if you don't let me know I don't I'll never gonna pray for you again because I'm like you need help and it's a help I can't offer to you and you need those places and that's the last time I heard from him and so I actually thought that he's gone last year in the summer we were in the park leading a worship service and the young man that young man comes comes at me looks a little bit fatter bigger his face kind of like you know uh, looks healthy and I said is that you he's like yes this is me he says Vlad I, I took that number that you gave me on on Facebook he says that night I called local teen challenge and he says I didn't go to work next day he's like I did what you said I quit everything he says I know that I'm gonna still be arrested go to jail he said it's been six months but God set me free he says God cleansed my life he says I'm a new man you need to be desperate you need to be desperate for your deliverance you need to be hungry for God you can't play games I want to be free but I'm just not sure about the prayer line and everything listen just keep suffering until you and then after that you say you know what God I, I want you more than anything in my life about a month ago I was in Milwaukee Oregon and a young man messaged me on Instagram and he said that I need to meet with you urgently and I replied back and I said I'm not meeting with no one before the service that's just my thing I'm not going to meet with you after the service he says if you don't meet with me before the service I'm not going to make it and I was like what are you threatening me with like taking your life he's like it's not my life he's like, he's like I will die he says my case is so severe he says it's worse than any any you've encountered now, trust me we've encountered a lot of cases he's like you have to meet with me so I decided to meet with him he tells me about all that divorce that's happening in the family all the evil spirits that are tormenting him he says I went to my local pastors and they said you just need to be stronger in the Lord he says Vlad he says I have a problem he says it's not just me he says, I have a spiritual problem he says and nobody even understands that and I told him I said well great you want to help I'm gonna pray with you but I'm gonna ask you to do something I said Jesus looked at, the, at people who struggle with lust he didn't tell them they need to get the demon out he says they need to be able to endure so much discipline that it makes cutting off of your hand look like nothing I said have you endured that kind of discipline of course not because you're on Instagram 24 7. I said why don't you remove all of your social media for next week and next three days we are going as a fast church as a fasting you fast with us here's two books to read and I'm like I'll ask you to read that I said if you don't do that don't talk to me again because you're not hungry and I can help you I can pray for you but I'm like you don't need that everybody prayed for you you need help and I was like I can tell you how to get that help because I got that help myself I'm like you gotta be desperate bro and I never heard from him again until last Sunday I was in Portland speaking at the Grace Church, it's a larger church. I give an altar call. A young man ran to the front and he didn't just run to the front, he got on his knees and, and uh, Casey, you, you were there. There was a young man, he, he got on his knees and I didn't pay much attention to it, it was well dressed and then during the service he starts yelling. He starts like crying and yelling and then I looked at it and I saw him laying prostrate. I didn't connect the dots. At the end of the service he comes to me and he said, Vlad, when I talk with you in Milwaukee, he says, I decided to follow your advice. He says, I cut everything off. He says, I not only I read the books, not only I fasted. He says, I quickly admitted myself to the rehab, even though I didn't have addiction to drugs. He says, it was this, the addiction to the sex, sexual perversion. He says, I admitted myself to rehab. He said, it's been a month. He says, but I have not felt the freedom. But he says, this morning when I woke up, he says, I had this sense in my heart that today is my day of freedom. He says, little did I know. He says, I ran to the altar and he says, right there at the altar. He says, I felt something come out of me. He says, I don't know how to explain it, but he says, I felt it. He says, I feel light as a feather. He says, and I felt like I was delivered. Yeah. Deliverance is for the desperate. Can somebody say amen? Come on, church. Let's just raise those hands right now. Begin to sing it out. Sing it by faith. Sing it in advance. That you know he loves you. He's on your side. That he has accomplished that victory.
He has accomplished that breakthrough in Jesus' mighty name. We've come to a time right now where we're going to prepare our hearts for prayer. We're going to prepare our hearts for that warfare. I'm going to read to you one verse from 1 Samuel chapter 17. And it says the following, Therefore David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of his sheath, and killed him and cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they fled. Now the men of Israel and Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines at the entrance of the valley to the gates of Ekron. We all know the story where Philistines were proud and good because they had a champion. And David came in and he slew that champion. And when that champion fell, their courage fell. And Philistines, instead of creating a war, they were in panic. And Israel rise, rose up and went against the Philistines and they conquered that day. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, the son of David, he conquered a Goliath on the hill of Golgotha. He removed his authority, he disarmed him and he crushed him under his foot. And all the demons today are in panic when you know that. And today that freedom, that victory that Jesus accomplished is yours and mine. And today those Philistines which still remain many times in our life, they are going to flee because we are going to pursue what belongs to us. We're going to take back everything Satan has stolen. We're going to occupy what God has promised. We will possess the gates of our enemies. We will possess our possession and we will walk in freedom. We will walk in victory and we will walk in everything God has given to us. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Curses are real. Curses they attack people. They attack young people. They attack old people. They attack famous people and they attack people who are not maybe known. They attack all kinds of people but there is only one thing that can stop the curse and that is Jesus Christ. On the cross he already accomplished a victory and today what we are praying for we're not trying to get God to give us something we are only cashing the check of what's already been ours in Jesus Christ Can somebody say amen hallelujah deliverance is your bread and God offers it to you today deliverance from the voices that are intrusive deliverance from the demonic oppression it is God's gift to you and that is a bread and I want you to receive that today in Jesus name I want you to say I know who I am I'm a child of God say I know what belongs to me and that is freedom that is deliverance that is healing and breakthrough and right now I receive what Jesus did on the cross he finished that victory for me my deliverance is my right it's my bread in Jesus name I'm more than a conqueror I am a new person I have a great future my past is over the devil has been defeated the sickness has been defeated in Jesus name say and right now I come against every Philistine every evil spirit every curse that is launched against me I come against it in Jesus name I bring it down I break its grip over my life in the name of Jesus I command every curse going in my family to be broken right now in the name of Jesus every demon that followed you here is gonna have to lose its grip right now your demon knew where he was coming maybe you didn't but we don't play around here we go straight to work spiritual warfare is real this is not a drill this is a war and spirits, evil spirits, they're nervous. Don't be nervous for them. Let them be nervous because their time to leave is now. It's the Philistines job to flee. It is your job to pursue. You need to walk out of this place and be free from that nightmare. Today, you need to be walking out of this place and not picking up that cigarette again or that gambling addiction again. 
or that issue again why because those spirits that chase you here have to be cut off from your life today in this room in Jesus name so I ask you that you pray with us let's pray together you can stand and watch good thing to do or you can stand and be engaged that's the best thing to do maybe you're coming here today you say my life is perfect you're lying to yourself number one but number two help other people stand in the gap for somebody else right now you don't have to scream and yell but I want you to speak I want you to speak to your mountain I want you to speak to the forces of darkness to lose their grip in Jesus mighty name I want you to say this with me say by the blood of Jesus and the fire of the Holy Ghost every evil spirit that has followed me here I command it to come out in Jesus name say every unclean spirit that followed me here I command you to come out to come out I command you out 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 loose your grip I break your grip come on right now command them out let's open up your lips command any spirit that came along with you right now just begin to disconnect yourself begin to command it out right now in the name of Jesus Christ right now is come a time to disconnect yourself from anything that is behind that repeated sin there's some people in this room today you have a repeated addiction that you keep falling into and behind that is an evil spirit the Bible says he who does sin is a slave of sin and the only one freedom exists is in Jesus Christ that for that addiction can be to gambling that addiction can be to drugs to cigarettes it could be addiction to pornography it could be addiction to lying it could be addiction to stealing exaggerating whatever it is you must be disconnected today in Jesus mighty name this memorial weekend is going to be a weekend to remember in Jesus mighty name come on somebody I want you to say this prayer point with me say any chain that Satan might have used to connect himself to me I disconnect right now in the mighty name of Jesus say every chain that Satan might have used to connect me to himself be broken be broken be disconnected be uprooted from my life in Jesus name come on open up your lips begin to name that chain if it's gambling if it's addiction to cigarettes if it's addiction to drugs if it's generational curse of cancer if it's diabetes if it's disorder if it's some kind of a cheating and lying if it's the chain of divorce begin to break it right now begin to with your words there is power in your mouth begin to speak with authority and say I disconnect them right now in Jesus name I break its grip right now in Jesus mighty name Spirit we ask you for your presence to right now bring healing and restoration in the physical body in Jesus mighty name in the name of Jesus Christ just close your eyes for just a moment the presence of the Holy Spirit that brings healing has just entered this room and God wants to heal you God wants to restore you God wants to bring healing to your body right now in Jesus name somebody's right shoulder there's this there was this injury there and God is touching you right now I'm sorry somebody's left knee but there was a pain because of arthritis we just cursed that arthritis right now in the name of Jesus Christ whatever you had pain in your lower back whatever you had pain ear infections or you had problem with your spine or a weakness in your body right now just receive the touch of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name in the name of Jesus just ask just whisper say Holy Spirit touch me Holy Spirit rewrite my DNA strengthen my bones clean out my blood clean out my skin heal my bones Holy Spirit restore refill the chemicals that are missing in my brain heal my vision Holy Spirit just welcome his presence right now it's it's here right now the Lord is moving in this room Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. With the Spirit 
of the Lord is there is healing. There is breakthrough. He makes a way where there is no way. Receive from the Lord right now. Receive. If you're watching us on live stream, just receive right now from the Lord. of God is touching those of you listening to this later on the podcast and YouTube. God's presence is moving there as well. It is touching your life. Just open yourself up to God. Come on church. Welcome His presence. Get desperate for God. Get desperate for His touch. Come on. Come on. Jesus. For those of you who are watching us on live stream as well, the Spirit, the Spirit of God is moving there. Just receive your healing right now. Begin to move your body. Begin to begin to do things you couldn't do on your own because the Spirit of God is moving. The Spirit of God is touching in Jesus' mighty name. I had an ear infection uh -huh. and I couldn't really hear that well in my right ear. Okay. And during the whole prayer and process, my ear popped and I so, can hear out of my ear. So you couldn't hear from this ear and during prayer? I heard everything you heard everything good year. praise be to God come on somebody come on church let's give a round of applause Luciana what was happening to you well for the past two years I've had a lot of anxiety over my body and I feel like this past hour just straight worship and I felt the healing of it you, you know, felt just it. a warm sensation anxiety healing body. from the anxiety come on thank you Jesus come on church let's give a round of applause thank you Lord thank you Lord which which what was happening to you Every single time I try to worship, like, uh -huh. I'll feel something in my ear. So it just like, it tries to like stop me from worshiping okay. and stuff like that. Not only that, my my back, like every single time I try to go to sleep, my spine just be having problems. Okay. I just felt like, you know, the fire in my back and, uh, you know, that lightness right afterwards too. And I just started like bending over and I just feel no pain at all. Wow. Come on. Great. Glory be to God. Come on, Gwish. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Come on, let's just, a few, few more, few more testimonies. Few, I saw some people had their hands, a few more testimonies. Let's just come up. We want to give glory to God. That's all there is so that our faith can be established. So if you received the prayer during the prayer line and that you felt that something is gone or you received healing, give God the glory. Amen. Don't hold nothing back from the Lord. Oh, what, what do you, what do you feel? You received my, prayer? Yes, my knee, uh -huh. left knee. And when you were praying earlier on, before even you got closer to me, you, you, said somebody has pain in the left knee, yes, yes. arthritis, and I had Ezra a month ago, and I was told, though I had surgery two years ago, they said it has come back, arthritis on my left knee. So I've been asked to even see the doctor, but I refused to go. Mm. And you came out uh, by giving uh, a word of knowledge, uh -huh. no, word of knowledge mm -hmm. that someone has this. And you prayed for me, and now you didn't feel anything. Even when I was coming from Spokane, I knew. Santo, Hallelujah! Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give glory to the Lord. Come on, Jesus. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! And so, what was what was happening? Um, I have pain in my shoulder. Okay. And my knee. And if you said somebody have pain in shoulder, I'm supposed to be go chiropractor last week but somehow he canceled for me. I'm not able to go. Oh, wow. And today, like you say, shoulder, and I feel, feel like heat in my body from my head, and I just wow. feel it. And I can't wow. lift up my arm. Jesus. Well, I cannot lift like so much. And, and I said that it was uh, this shoulder. Yeah. Yeah, it was the right shoulder. This shoulder and my knee. And, the and right, now and I can lift knee. Oh my goodness, come on somebody. 
Jesus is the chiropractor. He never cancels on you. Amen. And he does it for free. Somebody say amen. Amen. So what happened? Two healings. Um, when Pastor Java was here, uh -huh. he said an angel, uh, healing angel was taking me home, going home with me. Okay. And I was healed of Hashimoto's autoimmune disease. Okay. Really? Yes. And so you don't have a week and a half before Christmas. Yes. Really? And you don't have the you no don't have the problem no. since. No. Oh my goodness. And then today. Wait, wait. Let's me. come on. Let's give Jesus yeah. a round of applause Amen. first for that. Amen. Wow. Amen. Yes. And then today, um, I grew up in an alcoholic family, and I was healed emotionally. A really? lot of emotional healing happened. Really? Yes. I come felt on. the Lord just pull. Let lift pull that up. Out. Yes. Glory yeah. be to God. Glory be to God. Come on, church. You can do better than that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing. Amen. 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 Thank you for watching this content. I hope this was a blessing to you. If you're like me and you like to click on things, click on this, subscribe to our channel, and the content will come to you every time we post it. And remember, the best is yet to come.